The question asked was uh, the future of coastal cities, which I think is a general question. We heard the whole panel on sustainability this morning. I chose Jakarta, which is part of the Future Cities Laboratory project that we did in landscape ecology. And you see a CNC model of Jakarta, the whole watershed, 100 kilometers, and then projected futures on that same model. If you look at the picture on the lower uh, left-hand side, this is the Chiliwung River at its source, at the foot of the volcano. And then you see it in the city conveying rubbish that is not conveyed otherwise. We talk about 500 tons a day in the Chiliwung River. We're not showing this just as sort of poverty porn. We're saying that there must be a way to heal the city. We're taking it as a type. All, throughout all equatorial countries, there is a similar attitude towards rivers. And we believe, working with engineers from the ETH, from NUS, working with architects, planners, landscape architects from both Switzerland and Singapore, and also uh, Jakartan partners, that we can come to a sort of solution. Uh, here you see some of our, our, our um, uh, people from Zurich teaching Indonesian students from Ban Bandung Institute of Technology how to fly drones to collect data. We're actually in a data poor environment and in order to make assessments and to really develop models we fly those things. You see the picture on the upper right, left hand side and what's fascinating about the point cloud models we generate from that, this is not Photoshop, we make a physical model for instance, of the Chiawi Dam, which was just voted by uh, um, uh, the governor last week because they had a flood last week that killed 20 people, displaced 50,000 people. The water, when it floods here, goes up seven meters yearly. And here we have some of our professors, a Professor Rikitka, and a little bathymetry device that costs maybe $5 to make on the upper right-hand side. We've been using low-tech and systematically, consistently developing algorithms based on that data in order to generate plausible solutions for improvement. Here you see sections drawn through the slum areas. There's almost no data, at least we never got to the data uh, on the terrestrial DTMs, uh, the, the, the digital terrain models, and the students, locals, and both uh, Indonesian students helped us gather this material. Here you see the terrain of the river. It was coined by Professor Bolando, our uh, environmental engineer and hydrologist. It was urban lasagna. We're talking about roughly six to eight meters thick of plastic, diapers, and uh, unmentionable materials consisting of the riverbed. Uh, and you also see people measuring groundwater because we're doing a three-dimensional model assessing both surface and groundwater. Here you see the Chiliwung River and the very, very dense urban fabric. And you see the point clouds that we generated with Bandung with the help of the military too. It allows us then to really make proposals that are not just pictures, but actually physical models. If you look at the picture on the left, it's actually a picture of the flood last year in Jakarta, the picture above and below. If you look at the pictures on the right, it is our model with a simulated flood coming in. We can actually measure the quantity, the velocity, you can simulate things. And what it means is you look at an existing situation, but you can actually simulate conditions, modified conditions, and test them before you pay an engineering firm or a big company to do it. So here you see one of the bends in Kampung Malai, it's actually Bukit Duri, it burnt uh, after we took that picture, half that peninsula burnt down. Uh, but actually what we're showing here is a widening of the riverbed which then could alleviate a lot of the flooding problem and actually create real estate value, probably developing higher density, newer kinds of uh, living conditions. The chili wing is at the heart of Jakarta. It could become prime real estate. Of course, it would be a form of gentrification, but we don't believe in poverty as a perpetual condition. Here you see sections through that riverbed. We're showing urban ecology, urban agriculture, urban leisure space. The river used to be a dignified space with moshes, actually earlier temples, the chiefs, the villages were on those rivers. It was the main communication line. It has become the backside of the city. Here you see students' uh, uh, um, projects that have gone through the modeling uh, with very high, uh, the most interesting part is actually on the, on the right hand side, high flood risk. And you see some projects that completely blotch and others that succeed. So what's really interesting here is we're not developing 
hypothetical models. We're actually testing models. We're training local people from Indonesia, from Singapore, because we believe that it's really a, a more general geographic problem. And we think that's the role of future cities for the future. So the question is, can tropical rivers become the green corridor of future cities? And I think that that's a sort of plea to really invest on those rivers that have been neglected.